You took over as CEO. I guess you'd been working there for more than a decade, but in the middle of a pandemic, when not only were you dealing with a lot of transition internally, but the entire workforce, the whole platform was going through a transition. What was that like to navigate? Yeah, um, I mean, if I went back a year ago, by no means did I think that I'd be starting this role uh, from my bedroom <laughs> with my kids doing schoolwork around the house, uh, trying to navigate the company through a global pandemic. So it was definitely, uh, it was challenging. It was a challenging year, though, for everyone uh, across the world. And, you know, you don't get to choose to be a CEO only when the sun is shining. You can't be a leader only when things are good. And more than anything, I'm really proud of how our company came together. Uh, we're at a place now where we're, over 6,000 people are getting a job on LinkedIn every day. We helped train 42 million people on the platform last year to navigate the pandemic, resulting in what we just announced yesterday, which is uh, for our first time in history, $10 billion in revenue for the year for the company, which I'm very proud of. Not too shabby. You're also talking about the great reshuffle, this post-pandemic uh, change underfoot in the workforce. And I'm curious um, what the changes are that you see. You say hiring is back above pre-pandemic levels. Yeah, I mean, if you take a step back, and by virtue of us being LinkedIn and seeing professional conversations happening uh, across the globe, one thing we're seeing by far is that every company right now, every CEO, every leadership team is having to rethink what their company means, how they work, where they work, are they hybrid, are they remote? Fundamentally, they're rethinking their entire cultures and their entire values as a company. On the other hand, every employee in the world that's worked remotely for the past 18 months is trying to figure out for themselves not only how they work, but where they work and why they work. So we're seeing this just change in people understanding what they value in work. And that's creating what we're calling this great reshuffle. People are trying to figure out where they want to work, how they want to work moving forward. And I think that over the next 18 months, you're going to see uh, a lot of you know, uncertainty and a lot of confusion going on. But my guess is that over time, it all kind of shuffles out in the right spot where employees and uh, companies are coming together where they share their values and the way that they want to work. This ends up being a very positive thing for the workforce years out. Apple and Google just pushed back their return to work. Google and Facebook now mandating vaccines for employees. There's a lot of controversy about how companies are managing this shift. And I wonder if it could also for some companies, if they don't get it right, could it lead to a great exodus of talent? Yeah, and like, like I said, I think all these decisions that companies are making, and by the way, uh, they're not easy decisions. None of us have ever gone through them before. Uh, but they're really related to how we want our companies to work and our culture and values. And right now, employees are able to vote. And with their kind of idea of where they want to work, it's very easy to move around roles right now. And they're going to align with the companies that share their values. Now, um how are you thinking about return to work? I know Microsoft's policy and LinkedIn is an independent company, but vaccines, for example, will you require that employees have them? Yeah, you know, it's fascinating. I just saw uh, Google's news right before I, I came in. And, you know, the way a lot of this works is there's so much uncertainty and we, you know, we watch what other companies are doing and we all kind of learn along the way. Having a growth mindset is the key to, to all of this. Uh, for us, we've been embracing flexibility is the, is the core tenet of what we care about. Uh, we rely on our principles and most importantly, we rely on our culture. We trust each other to get our jobs done where it works best for us. And that's kind of key to what we do at LinkedIn. So does that mean you're thinking about the vaccine issue or... I, I think we're always open to kind of better understanding what works best for us. And, and I, I don't know what that means long term for LinkedIn. My guess is uh, we're all going to keep learning. And, you know, watching Google's news today, my, my thought is that, you know, the more that we give employees choice about where they work, things like requiring vaccines to come into the office, as long as employees have a choice to work from home, that'll probably be an okay thing longer term. When you're requiring someone to have a vaccine and come into the office, uh, that could be more trickier for companies. Now, you've been owned by Microsoft now for five years, $10 billion in revenue. I'll never forget the morning that I got a, woken up to interview Satya Nadella and Jeff Wiener in about an hour, the, the news of the deal that nobody seemed to see coming. How has being Microsoft, being part of Microsoft changed the company? I think it's been one of the most positive experiences of the company uh, by far. You know, when, when Microsoft acquired the company, Satya's vision and Jeff at the time, you know, they kind of sat down and said, this is a deal about growing LinkedIn, period. And by being part of the Microsoft ecosystem, how can we help to grow LinkedIn, but keep LinkedIn as an independent standalone company? You take a look now, five years later, I mean, revenue's nearly tripled since that acquisition. Uh, we're growing faster and accelerating off a larger base now. So I think that that thesis that they started with five years ago is really playing out. And for me, 
it's just such a pleasure and honor to be part of that leadership team and to watch people like Satya or Amy Hood or Brad Smith, I mean, best in the business to learn from and to help you know, move LinkedIn and the company forward. You did have some layoffs last year. I saw that was maybe, maybe that was like one of your first memos that you unfortunately had to write in the talent solutions business because people weren't hiring, right? Um, it, are those kind of structural changes behind LinkedIn? What does the growth story for the company look like? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, LinkedIn is an 18-year-old company, and last year around this time, we saw an opportunity for what we needed to do to move the company forward, and we, and we made those changes. Right now, when you see this great reshuffle happening, when you see every company and every CEO and every employee trying to navigate the future of what work looks like for them, they're all turning to LinkedIn to figure that out. And I think that's a really valuable place for us to be in terms of people find the skills they need, the roles they need, the opportunities they need to navigate this. So uh, across all our business lines, this further engagement, people coming and turning to LinkedIn is only lifting all boats across the company. And I know you're historically a product guy. You've been at the company for 12 years. Um, LinkedIn has, you know, some people have complained about spam and that the product isn't as slick as it used to be. How are you thinking about that? I think across our, you know, 774 million members have joined LinkedIn. We have about three members that are joining per second. Uh, engagement is an all-time high. People are connecting more than ever. They're learning skills more than ever. They're finding opportunities more than ever. Uh, and it's, you know, our job as a product organization, as a company, to just keep ensuring that we can connect that talent opportunity uh, as much as we can through the product. We're also seeing... You know, out of our membership, 125 million members now are our first line workers. It's the segment that's growing. 35% of all signups right now are first line workers, and they're more engaged than even the knowledge workers. So we're starting to expand even beyond our core uh, globally, right? Now. And LinkedIn had made some progress in China, which was one mark, one play, one market where where we thought that maybe a, a U.S. tech company would succeed. What are you actually seeing there now, given the the crackdown and? you know, challenges for company, Chinese companies yeah. uh, that they're having. I mean, yet. I think just taking a step back in general, one of the things that I've learned in this role are the number of constituents that you have to manage as a CEO. And more and more governments are becoming an important constituent to, uh, to work with, be it how we work to create economic opportunity in China. Uh, last week, I actually sat down for lunch with uh, Spanish Prime Minister Pedro Sanchez, and he talked to him as well. They came to us trying to, you know, figure out how to help, you know, uh, grow technology in Spain, turning to LinkedIn for uh, help with skills data and opportunity data. Met uh, two weeks ago with uh, former Secretary John Kerry, who's now the special envoy to President Biden on climate. That fundamentally, climate change is, is going to be about a human capital problem to help ensure that people have the skills they need for companies to move forward. So working with governments is becoming much more part of the job than it ever has. And I think that's OK, because they all share broad and prosperity and turning to LinkedIn to help them. Can you work with China? We have, and we will continue <laughs> to, yes. So what does the jobs picture look like then next year, this time? A lot of uncertainty ahead. But a year from now, what do you see? You know, my guess is that we'll continue to see uh, for probably 18 months uh, the idea of companies really trying to understand what their culture and values are, what companies mean for them, what their business model look like moving forward. At the same time, employees trying to understand what they value. We'll see a lot of reshuffling. We'll continue to see hiring at, at large pace. But ultimately, my guess is that this all settles down into the right place probably 18 months from now.